My name is Marius Paul. Sasnawa is our traditional name. Gaziot Ine Nene, that's popular aspen tree home territory. It's presently on Treaty 10 territory. It's in northern Saskatchewan. I'm Candace Paul. I also live in Treaty 10 territory. And uh, we're part of Committee for Future Generations. And we've taken on uh, the nuclear uranium industry at both ends because they mine in our territory and they want to bury nuclear waste in our area. When the uh, mining industry moved in, a lot of the people were once self-sufficient, they were sovereign, they knew how to live off the land. Uh, once they were removed, it created an alien system that they are getting used to and it takes time. So a lot of the people that have been dealing with the changes also includes destruction to the lands. Just as a reminder of what had recently took place in British Columbia of the uh, massive spill there, our lands also went through some very devastating spills of radioactive water, the one that took place in 1984 up in the Key Lake uranium mine. So all that, the devastation, the lands and waters, destruction has led to a reaction by our people who are also very, very slow to adapt to these toxic uh, materials in their lives. So they are basically left unemployed, dependent, and very, very confused at this point. We hear a lot from the workers. Um, workers tell us of some of the practices that happen, like they've had, to, they've been told to bury uh, radioactive garbage in the muskegs. The muskeg is a big, big swamp. So it's getting into the waters and they know this. And a lot of them feel like it's the only job in the area. They promised economic prosperity. We didn't get economic prosperity, we got a class system. The people that work have some money, they can buy big trucks and stuff, but the rest of the people are unemployed. So, and so it's changed the culture. There's not the sharing that used to happen. The people that have money don't share. You know, it, it's all become individualized. And uh, we're seeing what's happening with the workers is a lot of them are, are it's fly-in jobs. So their families are, are disrupted, their family life is disrupted, their relationships are, are disrupted. It affects how their children learn because dad's gone or mom's gone for a week at a time and everything is changed when they come back, everybody has to readjust. Um, the guys that work there, a lot of them feel that the work they're doing is hurting the earth and they, it, it is hurting their spirit. It's tearing their spirit right apart. A lot of them don't stay long in those jobs. They'll work for a few months and then either they get laid off or, or they just can't handle it anymore. It's, uh, they've seen the lands change too much and they're starting to see the animals are disappearing and the fish are disappearing, the fish are sick. Uh, we know that there are studies done uh, on the on the meat on the fish and it shows that there's heavy metals and radionuclides in it but this was never made public it was available on the internet but people didn't know it was there they didn't even know there was a study so all of this meat and stuff is affected and that's what we eat we don't get foods from the stores as much because it's way too expensive and this is affecting our our, our families, people are starting to come down with cancers and other diseases. In our community of 700 people, 100 people are suffering from cancer now. And the nuclear industry and the health industry are tied together, they're partners. So we wanted a health study. There's never a baseline health study before they started. And they knew before they started because of what happened in Japan and so forth that it's going to affect us. But they didn't want a health study because it would Don't show the difference. Hiroshima. Yeah, in Hiroshima, yes. Yeah. Um, 
we recently asked the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, we demanded a health study be done. They turned to their medical health officer, the provincial medical health officer in Saskatchewan, and he said, no, we don't need that. That would be a waste of money. They asked him what kind of study they'd want. A mental health and wellness study, because we have high suicide rates and, and people are depressed. Well, when one in seven of your people are dying, it's almost one a month in, in our community that there's somebody being buried from cancer. And, you know, there's, there's a whole community in grief all the time. It never, it's, it, we don't have time to heal. So we're not really mentally deficient. They blame our cancer rates on socioeconomic conditions, which is nonsense because we're living in better conditions than we were 30, 40 years ago. And yet our, our people are dying at younger ages. It's getting to the point where in another generation, people aren't going to live as long to become actually true elders. What's that going to do to our culture? So you cannot blame it on, on, on the, uh, the change of diet because you, you still have the, the, the traditional diet of uh, hunt, hunting and gathering. Exactly. But what they said with this test that they did was, well, the levels are below the safety limits. You should be all right if you don't eat it all the time. And if you don't eat the organ meat. Well, guess what? We eat it all the time. We eat the organ meat. And the question is, is the safety level? safety level set to a suitable limit. It's way too high. Yeah, what about that safety level? The safety levels are set to the equipment that the uh, mining company can handle. So whatever their, mi their, their equipment can deal with, that's what the safety level is set to. They've recently installed things to take care of molybd molybdenum, selenium, and they say it's the best in the world but there's still uranium and all of that, and there's whole watersheds that are, are dead. There's no fish. And now with the new environmental laws in Canada, there is no, there's no reason that they have to Because there's look no protection on, on, the, on the watershed, and there's no protection on the rivers anymore. And they can turn those whole lakes into tailings ponds and the whole watershed into a tailings pond. We know that the tailings ponds are leaking. The workers tell us these things. The way that they're built is not suitable. They were taken to task at the Canadian Nuclear Safety Committee hearings on the tailings ponds and they just slough it off. And anything that was done in the past, they say is a mistake of the past. That's a direct quote from Michael Binder yes. of the CNSC. So, so what about the present? The present, well, like, they'll say that in a few generations. That's what they'll say. Oh, well, we didn't know when, they, when it pr is proven. And, and it's up to us to prove it because they keep saying it's safe. So what is the solution about, the, what is the, you know, what sh should we do in Quebec about uranium industry and uranium mining? Don't no part of you. Don't allow it. Uh, if push comes to shove, make sure your people get a baseline health study. But why should you? Because they're going to make you sick. And it's still cultural genocide. They really don't care. They knew, actually, they've got the studies that show that people, what happens to people when exposed to even low doses of radiation. They have those studies. They just don't want to follow that because it's inconvenient for their industry. Because the, the industry is uh, telling us that they, are, they have safety guard and they have, uh, they have ways of uh, mining and taking care of the tailing that is uh, really safe. Is it true? They're, they're experimenting. The tailing, especially with the tailings, in order to keep those tailings safe, all they're coming up with is an experiment that they're going to try. And what they've been doing with the Clough Lake one is leaking. So if it was really safe, it wouldn't be leaking. They can't guarantee that safety. What about the workers and, and their family? What's the impact of them? They say that they have uh, all the equipment to make the workers safe and and they're healthy. <laughs> the workers are told certain things. They've got this dosimet dosometer and it's going to read 
if they get overexposed. But what it doesn't read is what's going on inside their body. So when they breathe in the dust and those particles get into their body or if they swallow particles. And that's pretty much has to happen. You're exposed to it all the time there. Even the guys that change the truck tires, they're banging the dust off the tires. They're breathing it in. Weren't you supposed to wear like mask in respiratory system? Only in certain areas. And I don't take the masks uh, at other uh, radiation protective uh, clothing matters because they're dealing with uh, atomic particles. So a lot of these people that have been impacted as uh, the workers, they bring all that stuff home. It's in their hair, it's in their, it's a, yeah. you know, behind their ears, in the crevices of their skin, it's in their pores. And yeah, they breathe it in and out, in and out, and so their families are also affected really negatively and morbidly. And so die. what's the ratio of survival from the workers and like, how, how long do they, they live? Well, one of, uh, one of the workers that I know who died of cancer about six years ago worked for the mine, mining companies approximately 20 years. And he died at age 54. 54 is what he passed. And he was a rugged, athletic type of person. He was strong. But Can you tell us his name or? Abraham was his name. He used to play hockey for uh, Junior A Caliber. So he was a very, very uh, active, uh, very healthy individual. But he died of lung cancer. And he died horribly. He actually, didn't he not leave a message for, with you for, for t to tell yeah, people? Yeah, yeah, he asked, he asked that, tell our people not to work for the uranium mining companies. There's a lot of cases too we've heard of overexposure that were never reported. We know that people, they have these safety competitions and they put people in teams for these safety competitions so, and there's lucrative prizes if you win the safety competitions. So if you do have an accident at the workplace and you do become exposed, they don't tell. And if you do tell, you're going to be sent home and you don't get to work. So a lot of that kind of thing goes on. The youngest I've heard about um, getting sick is 24 years old. And he worked in the mines from right after high school. They're also recruiting our kids in the high school before they even have a chance to think of other careers. And the government, like the government is pushing us towards just being minors. That's all they want us to be. And in, as far as improving our lives in our communities, it isn't doing that. We don't have an economy. We have two stores in the, most of these communities in our north. And it's, it's Nobody's becoming business people. Nobody's becoming, serving what our local community needs are. So right now, when those mines close, nothing is going to be there. Do you have a final message to the commissioner of uh, the BAP uh, on uranium mining in Quebec? The, uh, when, when the mining company Cameco signed a $600 million deal uh, for a decade, worth uh, prosperity. The prices, the uranium prices drop. So I think the mining company was also aware of that because they have business projections that will help them decide when they will be facing good prices, bad prices, etc. They knew, they knew that's why they went after our people and to, to get them to sign right away. So as soon as they signed, then it was like saying, okay, you signed away your land, sorry, you gotta go now. I would advise the people of Quebec to stand strong, to stick with the moratorium, permanent ban on uranium mining. Because wherever the uranium industry and the nuclear industry are, people get sick. And the uranium and nuclear industry are responsible for deaths all over the world. They're making us be the collateral damage for their profits. And that's unacceptable. So yeah. don't, don't do it. 
Don't get trolled by nuclear medicine. It's an oxymoron word. There's a lot of spin words in the nuclear industry. They do say they do say they're safe. There's no significant risk. What that means is there's no significant risk to their profits. That means there's still risk. And unless they can prove to you that there is absolutely no risk, don't go for it. Thank you very much, Candice. Thank you very much. This is nice.